What's going on guys? So it's been a while since I've done a discussion video. The WGA and SAG are all striking right now. The DGA, the directors, they were able to work out a deal, but writers and actors are striking. Fran Drescher of the Nanny fame is president of SAG and she made an impassioned speech about the difficulties of even trying to negotiate with Hollywood. This is historic for many reasons, and I'm making a video about it because I've seen a lot of misconceptions floating around the internet, surprise, surprise, and I figured a guy wearing a Pikachu shirt should set things straight. The writers have been striking now for over 70 days. And just to be clear, I am not yet a member of the WGA, but when my film Shelby Oaks comes out, I will finally be eligible and so I will likely become a member at that time. So I don't have any, you know, reason necessarily to make this video other than to sort of talk about a few things, especially with SAG right now that I've been thinking about, that I think people should understand and that should be part of the conversation. Because when the writers began to strike, I saw a lot of concerning comments spread around the internet, namely, movies suck now, so why should writers be paid? They should learn to write better, all that kind of bullshit, to be completely honest. And and the, the truth of the matter is movies don't suck right now at all. I mean, didn't everyone pretty much like Top Gun Maverick or Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 or John Wick Chapter 4? These are all WGA written productions. You know, I mean, just because aspects of some movies aren't great does not mean that people who work shouldn't be paid. I mean, come on, man. When people think of these guilds, whether it's the DGA, the WGA, SAG, they tend to think of like the most famous people in them. When they think of actors, they think of Brad Pitt or Keanu Reeves, George Clooney, Tom Cruise, Denzel Washington. They think of these mega rich, incredibly successful celebrities. But those are not the only people that are part of SAG. There are people right here in Ohio who are members of SAG who do work like bartender roles or a customer at a restaurant or someone walking around in the background. Not everyone is SAG. Some people are non-union or SAG eligible, but there are plenty of actors who are part of that union and they do not have a livable wage. I mean, not even close. And when it comes to the WGA, writers are historically undervalued. I mean, I can tell you that from personal experience. I've had really a hard time getting my first film off the ground. Before Shelby Oaks, there were many other almosts that happened that I've never talked about. I have done countless rewrites on films that came really close to happening, unpaid, every single time. I've worked for months and months and months on scripts with producers who are millionaires who wanted to get one of my films made, never saw a cent, and was treated like trash the whole time. None of my work was respected, and I was constantly asked to do the most insane, stupefying rewrites that would blow your mind. This is totally normal for writers. They go through this shit all the time. They sit there trying to figure out how to get a film made because they love this craft and they love movies so much and they constantly have to deal with people who are far richer and far more powerful than they are to make that happen. And so they're in a constant state of placating someone who is considered better than them and who knows it and who will use that mentality that they are powerful and better than them to control a writer and, and make them feel like trash. And it happens all the time. And the WGA is 100% striking for a good reason. But I think the biggest thing and the number one reason I wanted to make this video that is extremely alarming about what Hollywood was proposing to SAG and what SAG said <laughs> no fucking way to was this idea of owning a background actor's likeness digitally. So in a movie, if you have a crowd scene or you need a bunch of people to fill out a room, that's background actors. In the past, they were normally referred to as extras, which is a somewhat demeaning title, and so background actors sounds a little better. These people make your shot look good. They fill it out. They make it seem like you're in a real space, especially in big movies where you're at stores or events or a concert or something along those lines. Background actors are absolutely necessary. In some cases, it's CGI, like if it's a battlefield in Troy or the Lord of the Rings or something, but that's understandable. But according to SAG, what studios were saying was that they would like to hire a background actor for one day, meaning a day rate, whatever it might be, probably somewhere around $200 to $300, scan their likeness, 
and then excuse them from work and not need them ever again. But then, and this is the scary part, they would own that actor's likeness forever. And they could just keep using that digital likeness of somebody in background scenes of all of their movies whenever they wanted. Not that I need an analogy for how crazy that is, but I'm gonna do one anyway. I wrote about this on my Instagram already, so if you follow me there, you would have seen this. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck got their start doing background work as actors. They're in the movie Field of Dreams somewhere in the Fenway Park scene. They've talked about this a lot in interviews, how much fun they've had and how impactful that was for them. And that experience continued to lead to other background work and eventually school ties came around and Saving Private Ryan and Born Identity and Ben Affleck's Oscar winning career as a director and all of that great stuff. But let's just for a second imagine that this modern day technology that studios are trying to push on people existed back in 1989. And Matt Damon and Ben Affleck did one day for the Fenway Park scene and then had their likenesses scanned and they signed that away forever. And then they don't come back for a second day. Kevin Costner and James Earl Jones just hang out on set with a few background actors who are actually there, knowing that the rest of it is just going to be filled out with these new scans that they've just acquired. And Universal, who made Field of Dreams, would now own Matt Damon and Ben Affleck's likeness forever in perpetuity. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wow, they could really take advantage of that. Except that's actually not what I'm saying because I don't think Matt Damon and Ben Affleck would have actually gotten famous had this technology existed. Because they would have owned their likeness, which means that if Matt Damon and Ben Affleck wanted to continue to do background work after Field of Dreams, Universal would have been like, uh, no, we already scanned you, we don't need you for any more work. Oh, okay, well, there's some background work here for this production, that's Warner Brothers. Let me go over there and, and do some background work for this Warner Brothers movie. Oh no, sorry, Universal actually owns your likeness. We can't work with you because your likeness has been signed away to Universal. Oh, so like, what do I do? Did I just like do a day on Field of Dreams and I'm never gonna work again? There are so many loopholes to what I just said that you could fill it with so much shit. It's, it's insane how terrifying that notion is and that would probably lead to Damon and Affleck never having made Goodwill Hunting, Robin Williams never getting a Best Supporting Actor win, no born identity, nothing that Affleck ever did in the future, none of that would probably have happened because their careers would have ended right then because they signed their likeness away in a second to some studio that doesn't give a shit about them. I can't believe that an actor would be degraded to that level. These are people who make movies happen. Writers are, are just as important, in fact, more important. Without a writer, you don't have a movie. Writers, directors, actors, and especially crew are the people who get these movies made. All of these mega rich people who are, are sort of just profiting from the fact that other people are working very hard for them are terrified of losing like 2% of their money. And it's just absolutely, it's hilarious to be completely honest. One day a very good comedy released by a very brave studio will be made about these past few months. I think it's really easy to look at these strikes from a surface level and just think, well, SAG is just mega famous people, right? Like Angelina Jolie or whatever. And no, it's not. It's everyday working people who love their art and love their craft who just can't get ahead in this industry. And it's the same with writers. I mean, not every writer is Aaron Sorkin. There's tons of people who are just struggling to, to get anything made and who, who can barely afford to make a living in Los Angeles or New York. This is why the cast of Oppenheimer left the premiere in solidarity with SAG because all of them were starting actors once too. They all know what it feels like to be a struggling actor. Not a single one of them was just birthed into being famous and incredibly talented. And so this is what we're dealing with. And I really would love if more people understood that. I mean, you have to understand that former strikes are why writers have health care, are, are why certain things that we look at as normal now it's because somebody back in the day didn't get paid for a long fucking time on a strike. And that's exactly what this strike is going to do for writers and actors. At some point in the future, 30 years from now, there's going to be a very normal thing that everyone has because of these strikes. It might not seem that way now. It might seem like it's taking a while now. But in the future, the people who are reaping the benefits of this strike are going to be very happy 
that this strike is happening. Those are my thoughts on all this craziness. Nobody on either side wants a strike to happen, I, I don't think, but um, what has to happen has to happen. Writers and actors need to be compensated fairly, but even beyond that, they have to be respected. All the new tools that AI has created can in some ways be extremely useful, but just like anything that we ever create, we always abuse it somehow, and that's the really scary part. So we have to be very careful, and lines have to be drawn. So, you know, that's all I got to say about this shit. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.